They are the dictionary definition of the word money. Jews have developed the richest families in the world of commerce. Their sole achievement, recognized by all. Somehow the financial networks somehow reach out to the Jews. But do you know how this happens? I am here with a video that smells of money. And you can be amazed while watching how the tragedies they have gone through have turned into mind-blowing wealth. The first of the reasons why Jews are the masters of the money world is their religious beliefs. In the course of time, the establishment of new states in Europe and the rise of Christianity as the dominant religion marked the beginning of bad times for the Jews. Indeed, according to the Bible, the prophet Jesus was subjected to many persecutions by the Jews and was even crucified and killed under Jewish pressure. It caused the Christian population to turn against the Jews and to marginalize them and to exclude them from the European site. So much so that even in the years before the Middle Ages, Jews in Europe were strictly forbidden to own land, to study, to serve in the military, to hold royal offices, and in many places they were even forbidden to enter the city centers. In such an environment of exclusion, there were only a few professions that Jews could do, handicrafts and usury. As a matter of fact, usury was forbidden in Christianity, but the Jews were allowed to engage in usury, that is, usury against non-Jews. In the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy it is written, when you lend your brother money or food or anything else that earns interest, you shall not charge him interest. You may charge interest to a stranger, but not to your brother, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all that you do in the land where you are going to possess it. Usury, alone at high interest, became one of the main professions in the Jewish ghettos as the ancestor of banking, enriching some Jews. However, usury was not the only way out for the Jews, because the rich Europeans to whom the Jews lent money in the Middle Ages could at any time raid Jewish neighborhoods and loot their wealth by inciting the people. At this point, the second element that forms the basis of the commercial success of the Jews, namely kinship ties, appears before us. Therefore, they did not invest in real estate for centuries. Their philosophy was to be ready to flee, invest in what is light in weight and heavy in cost. And with this motto, they turned their earnings into more valuable metals such as gold and silver instead of real estate, which were valuable all over the world. And even if they were exiled, they did not lose their wealth. Because they are excluded, it is very important for them to hold on to each other, because they cannot do the professions that are allowed to Christians, and they can only do these things with each other. Look around you. You have surely seen people who are jealous of each other. Because of the money they earn, even in friendly environments. Maybe you have experienced it, but for a Jew, the richness of his friends and relatives is the richness of himself. Because it is impossible for them to survive in any other way and money attracts money, therefore, the Jews first opened business opportunities for their neighbors, while at the same time using their relatives living in other countries as branches and enriching them. Although the Jewish families were fragmented and exiled to different countries, both the obligation to marry only Jews due to their religious beliefs and the small number of them. In the video, we mentioned that Jews were forbidden to trade and study in the countries where they lived. So families who were better off financially sent their children to live with relatives in other countries for part of their lives, allowing them to learn different trades and see the world more broadly, in the same way that today's large family-owned companies employ their children in different companies for up to five years instead of hiring them in their own company after university, making the system more objective. In fact, if you don't teach your children how to make money, they will learn how to steal friends. Not only the Rothschilds, Einstein and countless others, but even Christopher Columbus, the discoverer of America, was Jewish. Let's compare two coffee companies. One of them produces great coffees and appeals to your taste buds. The other one has printed on posters that a portion of the profits from every coffee you buy will go to poor children in Africa or to scholarships for young people deprived of education. Which coffee company would you prefer? Another Jewish philosophy that constitutes one of the basic logics of today's big companies is the logic of, if you earn 10 liras, live a life of one lira. When you look at the well-established companies, the fact that family members try not to be mediatic and stay away from ostentation. Perhaps you have noticed the fact that you don't even know many of them today. It is a contribution of the Jews to the world of commerce because a Jew living in ostentation in Europe will attract attention and will surely incur the wrath of someone. 
In order to protect themselves from these possibilities, the enriched Jews would dress in a way that would not attract attention and would restrain themselves from ostentation and pomp. If you earn 10 liras, live a life of 1 lira, 1 lira for worship, 1 lira for charity, 2 lira for new investments, and the remaining 5 lira you can always keep. This is also called the jar system. As a matter of fact, the purpose of earning money is to be comfortable, and one of the definitions of comfort is that you have savings to cover it when you need it. And there is a detail here, and that is that you have to think about what you do not for a lifetime, but for eternity. According to Jewish principles, to be good at something requires a long time that cannot fit into the lifetime of one person. If you do not teach the subtleties of your profession to the next generation, that is, to your children, so that they continue to work in this field, then you have failed. When you listen to the story of most of the Jewish companies anywhere in the world, they tell you that they started as a small shop in the back streets and then institutionalized and spread around the world. This is true because the Jewish understanding of business says, are you an ordinary carpenter? Then do your job with love. Do not praise the bad product. The one who needs it also buys the bad product. If you say that your bad product is bad, you do not need to tell that your other products are good. You have a covenant not to speak negatively about anyone you do business with. If you listen to these words, you will sell the most seats in your neighborhood. If your children listen to you, they will sell the most seats in your city. If your grandchildren listen to you, no one can sell seats except you. Now let's explain this with an example from our own lives. Let's say you are a construction worker and you want your children to study. According to this Jewish logic, a wrong approach. If you are a construction worker and you manage to save some of what you earn, the only thing you need to do is to learn the tricks of the trade well. If you have saved enough money for your children to build and sell a house, your grandchildren will build the best houses for hundreds of people to live in. What does it mean to know that giving up the Lyra will bring five Liras for your children? Now we are faced with an interesting event during the construction phase of a touristic port, which I will not name, local businessmen entered the tender to operate this port and put forward the highest mevle. However, at that time, a mysterious Jewish businessman came out and warned that if I did not take the operation of this port, not a single tourist would come here. Indeed, international tourism agencies started cancelling ship tours and the port was given to the Jewish family. Always consult someone who knows when Jewish business people are in a difficult, situation. They get the ideas of a mentor. That is, a mentor who is experienced in commerce from outside the company. A mentor who will guide the way without adding emotions. Because he looks at the events from the outside is always a more accurate idea than those who are in that business. If you listen to the street, you will hear and see people who lend money to their friends and do not get it, who vouch for their loans and are exposed to large payments. But Jews never make verbal agreements. Trust and trade are completely different because human beings are fallible and the word flies and the writing remains. Otherwise, when you ask for your debt, you may be the one who is embarrassed by hearing words such as I will pay, I will pay, wait, is money your problem? How important money is for you? One of the most clever moves of the Jews is to create a need before selling. This application is really a genius discovery. Imagine that you have a tractor factory. If you distribute these tractors free of charge to large farmers, after a while, the users will need spare parts and repairs. In addition, the best advertisement is the one spoken on the street. So every farmer to whom you give a free tractor is actually an opportunity for other farmers to buy a tractor from you because that is the nature of human beings. Everyone wants someone else to taste a food they like. Ask yourself, right? Now you may say that not all Jews are rich, of course not. Different classes are needed for societies to survive. Yes, there are poor Jews, there are also Jews who have failed in the businesses they have undertaken. But our point of attention here is that although Jews constitute two thousandths of the world's population, they have achieved commercial. Success 90, 100 times their population capacity. The fact of the matter is that we have many economic lessons to learn from them, and they will obviously continue to be one of the most influential societies in the world for years to come. I hope that one day, they will open the door to world peace as much as their perseverance in trade. You are on the interesting topics. Don't forget to subscribe for more valuable content and see you in the next video.